Hey guys and gals, welcome to another edition of Shop Talk. Today we're going to be talking about how to properly use your Mesa Labs Tetracal. But first, a couple of things we need to go over about the proper use of a Tetracal. Number one, a problem you may have with your Tetracal is dead, dirty, or corroded batteries. Always check your batteries. Make sure they're in the proper position. They were not corroded and not dead. Number two on our list is a dirty Venturi. Your Mesa Labs Tetracal comes with these little beauties. They are Venturis and they all have two small holes on the outside of the Venturi. And they are big on the outside and slowly taper in toward the Venturi. These can become clogged with dust, dirt, lint, you name it, Cheeto dust. Use canned air, alcohol, some Kim wipes, clean that out, blast it out, make sure it's clean and clear. So, dirty Venturi. Third one on our list, make sure your O-rings are intact all present and properly lubed. Mm, number four, make sure the Venturi seats firmly in the base. There's two little buttons on the side of the monitor where you put in the Venturi and they need to be depressed so they can actually sense what Venturi you're using. Sometimes when it isn't properly placed in it, you'll get a misread. Uh, number five. Hoses. Hoses. Make sure your hoses are not cracked and that are connected properly. And last but not least, adapters. Make sure your leak check or flow check adapters, whatever you're using, are uh, properly lubed and uh, secure as well. So, how do we actually use this Tetracal? Well, it's quite simple. You'll take the battery holster from the front of the machine and place the batteries in as per the diagram on the front here. You can also use the uh, AC power adapter that's provided in your kit. And you will slide them in the front of the Tetracal. You will hear an audible click when it's in. Then you will select the Venturi you need for the proper flow you need to find. Uh, it comes with three of them. They're usually labeled one, two, and three. The number one Venturi, which we'll be using today, is used for anywhere between 6 to 30 liters per minute. We'll go ahead and slide that in firmly. Uh, the number 2 Venturi goes from uh, 1.2 to 6 liters per minute. And last but not least, number 3 goes from 0.1 liter to 1.2 liters. Now that you have the Venturi firmly in place in your uh, Tetracal, we we'll want to choose a hose adapter for the top of it. You have three different sizes. We'll be using the medium one, and in your kit you're supplied a four foot length of Tigon tubing with a little connector, and we'll firmly secure that to the top, like so. Uh, also, the Tetracal comes with a uh, temperature probe that plugs into the side just like this. There's a little slotted area, let me see here, like that and you're ready to go. Um, to zero, we'll just take this off for the time being, to zero the Tetracal, it's pretty simple. You don't want any airflow going through the Venturi while it's turned on, so just take your thumb, place it over the hose, and turn it on, and the Tetracal will go through four or five different startup screens. It'll tell you what size Venturi is in there. It'll tell you that it's zeroing the flow, it's serial number. Let's see what else it's going to tell us. 
telling us uh, that it's showing pressure in millimeters of mercury and flow is going to be in liters per minute and we're running Celsius for temperature. Once it comes to the main screen, you can release it. Now it's very important to allow this thing to equilibrate in the field for more than 10 minutes with it on after you've zeroed it. If you experience a temperature change or a pressure shift, uh, I think more than 2 degrees in temperature, more than 5 degrees in pressure, you need to uh, turn it off and uh, re-zero it again and let it sit. So with it being level, place it level on some place. And here's your typical BAM, either 1020, 1022 setup, or if you think about it, if you took off the sharp cut cyclone on top, there's your FRM setup. But we'll use the BAM setup just for fun today. You would take off the PM10 selective head, and that's what you'd be left with with a 1020 or 1022. You'll take your flow audit adapter, has the large port on it. Ensure that the uh, flow audit adapter is open and not turned off. You want it on. And then either with the pump running and flow going through, or with it not, doesn't matter, you just attach the hose and wait. Let it equilibrate, let it run for a while, don't be in a rush, let the tetracal uh, mellow out, as they say, and get a reading. Always keeping it level, keeping it in the shade as well as best possible, and uh, get an even reading like that. And the same thing would go for that FRM, you just wouldn't have the shortcut. And as always, with the temperature probe, try to keep it out of the sun. Keep it in the shade as best possible. Cloudy days are great for this. But always never touch it to anything. It becomes a heat sink instantly. Uh, keep it in the shade. Uh, sometimes the actual PM10 sampling head can provide enough shade uh, to give you a good temperature. Then all you have to do to break it down into its parts is remove the venturi. Tighten back up your hose, switch it off, and uh, place it back in its case. Uh, one interesting thing about this is that the uh, temperature probe is good for uh, a NIST uh, temperature probe. Uh, the barometer built into this is good for a NIST barometer, but the temperature ambient taken here is only used for uh, the uh, tetracal to calibrate flow with and calculate flow. Anywho, we thank you for your attention and your time at Shop Talk. Uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you.